Hello guys and welcome to a new war game video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the third game of the three games we played against Bubblebox, Silver Raptor and Val. Uh, we each took it in turns of being on each other's teams and we were using Dutch decks only. Now this game was played quite a long time ago and um, I thought considering I hadn't put up much war game content for a while that you guys might appreciate another replay and this was actually a pretty good one. I mean, the game lasts pretty long and there's a lot of interesting tactics that we make use of and uh, we definitely showcase a lot of the Dutch units in this one. So this is Mud Fight, uh, it is going to be a 2v2 and as you can see we are already putting units down. So for starters, myself and Val both decided it would be best to place down uh, our two Leopard 2A5s on our decks and also two recon tanks. Then we had some infantry which were the Corpse Balinair or Stuttruppen and some KCT from Val I think at the front there. Then we have some cheetahs, some Ihawks, a pretty standard start. I'm also going to be bringing in a BO-105CB and Val's going to be bringing in an escort just to uh, mix things up at the start. So basically uh, what we were decided to do as a team was for Val to hit the right side, Delta and Alpha, and for myself to hit the left side, Foxtrot. So I'm going to be doing this game uh, mainly from my point of view, uh, just because that's the p side of the game that I saw and that I can pretty much remember why I did what I did. Um, and then on the enemy team, obviously we've got Bubble and Silver who are going to be doing their own thing, and you can see uh, the sort of units they're bringing in a lot of infantry for the center town of course because they are going to definitely get there first and then we've got some interesting helicopters going on from bubble box and so on so that should give you a little taste as to what to expect I don't genuinely uh, or generally look at the enemy units because it kind of gives the game away in some cases but because we're using Dutch units all round you can see what units are being used the most and I think that'll be good to know for some of you guys who may be interested in making Dutch decks. I'll leave the uh, link to my Dutch deck in the description by the way so if you do want to check that out then be my guest. Um, you can just uh, copy it into your game and it should work. I mean it, unless the video is a bit out of date in which case uh, the link may not work anymore like a lot of my old ones but unfortunately I can't update those anymore because <laughs> the decks have changed so much. But anyway, off we go, and I'm going to change it to my perspective. And you can see all of my units slowly making their way over to the left side. Now, Foxtrot is going to be easy for Bubble Box and Silver to secure uh, early on because it is obviously much closer to Echo than it is to me. But my BO-105CB spots some APCs moving into this town, and that pretty much tells us that we have enemy infantry in that area. I've got my two or four units of Kortsman in here heading up to this tree line just to help to defend these roads against any fast moves. And then I have my recon following up with the M113 M1, M1, CMV 25mm and also the Leopard Recon. My two 2A5s are coming up as well. They are going to be taking position with the Cheetah PRTL A1. And Val's also got this CNV going up the left side here to probe into this forest on the left side. So my BO-105CB is starting to spot a few units moving into this forest. That kind of gives the game away as to where the majority of his armor and anti-aircraft are going. But over on this right side, Val has engaged Bubble Box as his KCT jump into the town and reveal a lot of these units heading towards us. Also the couple of Kortsman in air from Val I've not actually fully opened up yet, but any infantry that gets close to those will get hurt very quickly, unless obviously it's uh, more cots man in here. But the uh, auto cannons from these APCs are absolutely ripping to shreds Val's. And uh, cots man in here against cots man in here. You can see that Val's is actually coming out on top because he has two squads of them. But that uh, auto cannon damage there is quite significant. So those are going to be some weakened squads for a little while while uh, Val dodges those about. So Val's uh, 2A5s aren't going to make much progress towards this town, mainly due to the fact that 
Um, they won't be able to reveal the infantry very, very easily and fire on it without any close range recon. And considering he doesn't have any KCT to push with any infantry, that's going to be very hard to get into that town uh, throughout the game. So we basically decide uh, to focus on the right side, or at least Val does for now, uh, with these uh, two A5s. He's brought them right back. His I caught I Hawk uh, HE OS is actually moving forwards quite far. I'm not entirely sure if that was uh, purposeful or not. Either way, Val's escort is hanging around at the back, if you might remember from one of my last games. Uh, Bubble Box did do a cheeky strike with an escort previously, where he brought it around the back of the reinforcing sector and destroyed an enemy uh, CV, which was quite funny. Val not quite going for the same thing just uh, having a good look around for any enemy helicopters. So we can see that Bubblebox has landed some troops with these transport helicopters and they are going to be moving into this right side forest. So a lot of infantry presence for Bubblebox at Alpha over on this left side. A recon unit of my, my own was destroyed by this Leopard 2A5 which was then spotted by my Recon Leopard. Unfortunately the Recon Leopard took a side shot from the 2A5 and because of that I do, I do ping the 2A5 so that Val knows where that is if he wants to do anything about it. So that's going to make it pretty hard for me to push on this left side without any Recon of course. So I've got to be careful. I obviously still have this uh, BO105CB sitting right at the back here but I'm going to need more recon than that. So, of course, I'm going to reinforce with another recon tank and a recon APC. So my uh, marine uh, or corpse man in here haven't done anything so far. So I've kept them in their APCs. And now they're going to start heading to this right side. You can see I've put an attack marker over here. And uh, you guys must remember that we were all on the same team speak together. We didn't even change rooms. So we were sort of chatting throughout this game. I meant to record them live, but unfortunately uh, the audio corrupted so I can upload them just straight up. So I've had to like do a post commentary on them, but you've got to remember that when we were playing each other, we were sort of trying to joke about what we were going to do or trying to basically double bluff the enemy into making a move uh, that we could then take advantage of. So most of the time we were communicating with pings and this attack ping basically meant that I was going to start moving stuff over to the right side uh, to help Val push into Alpha. And that's exactly where these Corpse Marinier are going to end up uh, just to help push through this forest and clean out infantry. Uh, it's going to be very hard to push across the open here uh, if there's any infantry in these forests already because infantry in the open is going to be hard for against any in dense forest because the uh, cover bonus that that provides. Over on this side you can see an engagement occurring. The recon that Silver Raptor was making use of did get shot at the front there and now my 2A5 is being encroached upon by the enemy 2A5s but that H64TD comes a little bit too close and does get shot down by my iHawk Pip-1 the idea of Silver Raptor was to expose my Leopard 2A5 and try and kill it with that Apache, but unfortunately I had my Ihawk in the right location to shoot that down and he is forced to retreat because that helicopter was shot down. So yeah, Silver Raptor is going to move all of his 2A5s back, as you can see. He could maybe have kept advancing, but that would have left this 2A5, which was not spotted for him, to continue side shotting or trying to side shot his 2A5s. So here come my Corpse Marinier. They're finally getting to the right side just as the APCs are running out of fuel. We bump into some infantry that's made its way all the way down here, which was very good at bubble box. Nearly managed to get to the road where he could cut off at our reinforcements, but Val's Grenadiers are starting to take care of those Corpse Marinier with the help of the APCs. And I also jump out my own Corpse Marinier to help clean those up. So with my APCs almost out of fuel, I'm dropping out my Corpse Marinier now. And they're going to start sweeping right and all the way around in the forest. And like I said, because I don't want to go across the open here, because the 
enemy will be sitting in these tree lines or at least i thought they were at the time if i go to the neutral perspective you can see there wasn't actually anything in this middle forest at all uh, over on this right side there is some apcs and such but there is the the majority of their forces was on the top side of the forest here anyway heading back to my point of view you can see that val's escort was finally found and unfortunately shot down by the ah64 td and an enemy uh enemy transport helicopter that acted as distraction but either way my course running there are continuing to head round right and I've brought up these two squads that helped kill off the Corps Marineer down here to follow up. Over on this left side, it's pretty static, not really much going on. I've brought up a, a helicopter to help repair my 2A5NL, but that's about it. So not too much going on that left side. I'm focusing on my infantry movement on the right. So here we have the first infantry engagement. Six units of Stuttruppen 95 against two Korpsmannen 95 and as you can see the Stuttruppen are actually winning out and that's because all of these squads attacking two squads is definitely going to be better whereas when my second lot of Korpsmannen Air come in and manage to focus down uh, one squad of the Stuttruppen on this bottom side I do do a lot of damage, but what I'm going to do is pull back for now because I do not want to continue engaging outnumbered. So I'm going to get these Corpsman in the Air squads at the same numbers and go back for the engagement, in which case we will win out because Corpsman in the Air are better than the Stuttruppen. And that's because uh, the Stuttruppen are only shock infantry, the Corpsman in the Air are elite infantry, and the weapons are actually quite a bit better. So you can see the Korpsmann in air with the C7 carbine. It's a lot better assault rifle than the Stuttruppen have with the C7. So I end up running over those Stuttruppen squads quite easily once my second lot or third lot of Korpsmann in air arrive. They did manage to take out two squads of Korpsmann in air, which was actually a really good job. So that was very good of Bubble Box there to, to manage to pull that off. A nice sort of... Uh, curve around my corpsman there meant they died very quickly and not having them too bunched up and the suppression effect only affected like a couple squads and because the corpsman in there actually have a faster run speed than the stoop trooping as well they were catching up and did manage to pick up that squad now this is a destruction game i forgot to mention that at the top at the start so as you can see, we're currently in the lead with 470 points to 420, but this is basically uh, total destruction and there isn't a limit that we're fighting towards. So basically whoever has more or less kills, uh, well more kills at the end of the round, wins the game. And that's basically how it works. And you obviously get kills from destroying units. And when you destroy the unit, you get the equivalent points that they are worth. So the corpsmen in here are going to continue round after killing those Stuttruppen. Some APCs being pushed across the field now from Silver Raptor. But they are going to bump into Val's auto cannon uh, C and V there. And also the Leopard 2A5s in this tree line managed to pick off a couple of those. But they are getting pretty close to Val's anti-air and I was a bit worried about that but the last auto cannon volley managed to uh, pull that off and get the kill there. So over on this right our infantry movement is continuing. Val's uh, proceeding to maintain his APC support for me and as long as my corpse marineer engage first what will happen is uh, unless they are manually targeted the APC should stay alive a bit longer. Now the last APC that was sent forwards by Silver Raptor starts engaging my YP408 PWI but the uh, auto cannon from Val comes over and destroys that so that's the last of the APC threat in the center and now I've just got to keep dodging bubble boxes mortars as I move my corpse man in here around the right side. Also we've got to be a bit careful about these helicopters they could end up doing quite a lot of damage if they got the right angle onto my troops 
So I've got to be worried about that as well. Again, nothing much has been happening on this left side. I've just maintained uh, my discipline with these 285s, trying not to probe too much, uh, as there isn't much of a point in me going for the Foxtrot sector just yet. And you got to remember, because it's uh, total destruction, you don't have to worry about capturing points. Um, points, obviously, once you capture them, give you more reinforcement points over time. So it is, you know, quite important. But then again, you just you don't have to worry uh, too much about it. Uh, we still had like Delta under our control, and the Lance there nearly sniped Val's uh, con command infantry, but not quite. Anyway, it looks like they brought up a contesting CV. Actually, no, they didn't. That was just because uh, the command infantry was probably stunned from that Lance strike. So it took him a little while to regain his composure and maintain hold of that sector. So now just to neutralize Alpha and stop them getting bonus reinforcement points, I have brought up a command infantry squad and that's going to sneak into the bottom side of Alpha in order to neutralize it, like I said. I'm continuing to bring in more reinforcements. We've got a couple of YP-408s with more Corps Malinir coming up, I believe. And I've also got this BO-105CB coming around the right side just to provide recon against any of these helicopters that may decide to try and flank me. So McCourt's Malinir continue to make their sneaky moves. They have made quite a lot of progress, but in the middle uh, of the boxes, moving up some of these YPRs with the 25mm autocannon. So he's got to be careful with those, and obviously the mortars from Bumblebox once again forcing Val's Gortzman in there to change position and I think that's something that Bubblebox has been doing really well in all of the uh, games that he was playing against us was just like the mortar control has just <laughs> been really on point so anyway Val's YPRs actually revealed themselves as they tried to shoot down these helicopters and my Gortzman in do the same so Bubblebox is um Helicopters all get shot, shot down there as my machine guns open up. And with this YPR revealed, well, one of them got destroyed and that one's going to have to retreat. So now I'm bumping into four squads of Corpse Man in here. And you can see that because Cobblebox has not manually targeted the ABCs, they are getting three hits onto the Corpse Man in here as well. I managed to get my second two squads. Uh, to come up and help out and basically focus fire the squads on one side of the formation and that gives me the advantage I need in order to stun and finish off the rest of those courts man in here. Bringing in some bombs, we do manage to do a bit more damage there. Val bringing in that block 5, a perfect bombing strike just right so it didn't actually hurt my own troops. So now I'm bringing these corpse man in there to take out some of these APCs and there goes Bumblebox's mortar support again right onto uh, that infantry squad and APC. But my corpse man in there are on point and they will be continuing to move forwards and take out those squads. So we st I've still got these two squads but they are very low. I mean one's got two <laughs> men left and the other's got three. So those squads will die pretty easily. But these course man in there with 17 men left, well that's still doing a lot of work, destroying a lot of those APCs and definitely paying themselves off. So it's a lot more important when you play Destruction to actually make sure that your units pay themselves off and my course man in there have definitely been doing that. Like even the <laughs> 5 men left managed to get an APC kill and add an extra uh, 15 points to their name. So we managed to uh, basically force the command unit out of Alpha and I'm maintaining the capture with our command infantry. Down back here we do s discover the Corpse Manoneer and a F-16A Block 5 comes in from Val to destroy that squad. He lands the bombs right on target, wonderful bombing strike, gets rid of that threat. So now I'm bringing up some com uh, some resupply to basically refuel and rearm my APCs so I can actually use them. I've also brought up an AH-64TD just to get rid of some of the pesky APCs and other vehicles. My two squads of course, Manoneer over here unfortunately got hit by 
some APCs. Uh, so they died, but these Quartz Mariner 95 picking up another 15 points each as they destroy those two APCs. So that was really, really good, picking up more points for us. And um, now we are on a 1,250 point lead over the enemy's 690 points. So almost doubling the enemy's points at the moment. And now Val's moved his 2A5s up to start attacking these APCs. And considering nothing has been happening on the left and Silver Raptor has not pushed, I've decided to leave my recon here, but my tanks are making their way to this right side. And soon we're gonna have four 2A5s on this right side to push with, which is crazy. I'm also bringing over my AA, so you can see my two IHawk Pip 1s heading over and the Cheetahs to help out and maintain the AA support for those tanks. So here I've uh, got a cargo helicopter to come up and they are going to hopefully resupply my Quartz Mariner. And this uh, truck that I managed to capture is going to head back to base in order to resupply. So Val making a push back for this little town area. Pushing into Stutruppen with Quartz Mariner. Definitely going to be able to wipe them out pretty quickly. Those APCs helping as well. Bubble Box is uh, 2A1. He's trying to take out my APCs as they advance. But the reason I'm pushing those APCs up is to make sure that this 2A1 remains revealed so that the 2A5s of Val can take those out. So now we've noticed a couple more squads of Stuttruppen, which unfortunately take out Val squads of Grenadiers. But now they're going to bump into my replenishing squads of Quartz Mariner. And that's not what they wanted to do as they get taken out very, very quickly. So those two APCs that were heading towards the tank did get destroyed, but they managed to drop off these Quartz Mariner into the forest and those are going to continue to push and give us more presence in that topside forest. So my Leopard 2A5s are arriving as well as my AA and also the extra squads of Quartz Mariner. I've still got the AH-64 TD back here which is hovering low at the moment so that it's out of line of sight. And now these Quartz Mariner are continuing towards the mortars whilst also taking out APCs as they go. And these Quartz Mariner have now bumped into Stuttruppen and at such a close range I mean the Stuttruppen are almost as good as the Quartz Mariner but because the Quartz Mariner do have the C7 Carbine they are doing a lot of damage with the 60% accuracy but not enough the Stuttruppen are going to end up overwhelming that Quartz Mariner squad however these two units of Quartz Mariner are currently uncontested so Leopard 2A5 from Val does take a missile from the H64 TD, but the front armor of the Leopard 2A5 is 22. So the AP power of the Hellfire missile does not actually do that much damage if we look at it. It's got 26 AP power. So yeah, that's not going to do enough. And with Bubble Box dropping the ball a little bit, I managed to take out his three mortars. So we get rid of that pesky mortar support and I also managed to pick up a cheetah that was hanging about. So those Quartzman in there just got so many points there with that small push through the forest. And now we are on 2,040 points against the enemy's 900. So we got full control of Alpha and Delta and obviously Charlie. And over on this left side I've literally just got recon. So I've got two recon tanks, I've got uh, two recon APCs, got a recon helicopter. I've also got a recon infantry squad in the APC, but I don't uh, remember to bring that out for a little while. So that's just going to sit in the APC, and I've also got another APC there. Um, I brought back this IHawk Pip 1 just to sit behind the enemy lines with another recon tank on the left. So as you can see, I have not neglected my recon at all in this game. Over on this right side, not using recon too much because it's mostly uh, forest engagement. So as my Quartz Mariner are moving through the forest, 
Recon doesn't actually help them too much because of the line of sight blocked by the trees. But either way, the Stutrupen are still pushing round on this right side in Alpha, so we do have to be a little bit careful about that. But I'm maintaining my reinforcements towards these two squads in order to continue towards uh, their base and their total destruction. So we do see uh, there is a Verplug squad somewhere in these tree lines as it did fire at Val's Stinger squads and those Verplug squads can fire at infantry so as you can see there that's exactly what they are doing. And now I'm trying to run away from two enemy Quartz Malinier squads because they have greater numbers. But Val's coming in with an F-16A to try and bomb them. And as the bombs land, they do do a lot of damage. And that does give my Quartz Malinier a ch chance to run away as their Quartz Malinier gets stunned. And now, with that bombing strike being so successful, what I do is I split off the low unit of Quartz Malinier and run in the one that still has nine men. By doing that, I can engage their squads of Quartz Malinier and then flank them with these two that I've brought up to reinforce and kill off that squad very quickly. Now you've got to remember, that even though I have less numbers, their Quartz Malinier were panicked at the time of that bombing strike. So my lower number health here did pretty well initially against that enemy squad before the reinforcements arrived. And that's because of the panic status. Now, unfortunately, that one man does run into 30 or 29 Quartzman in here. So I'm forced to bring my Quartzman in here back to fight them. And Val's finding the uh, rest of the APCs and the Stutruppen on the right. So we're cleaning out those just so that we have the space we need in order to move on. So I'm slowly catching up to Bubble Box's course man in there here. They keep revealing themselves to this supply truck that he decided not to destroy. And with my own block five, I do get a really nice bombing strike onto those course man in air squads and managed to kill one, but it does leave one remaining on one health. And as you can see, as soon as they opened up, we destroyed them. So Bubble Box's UH-14s make a retreat as these are the helicopters that I believe dropped off those troops in the first place. But now we are starting to reveal the Verplug squads that are sitting in these tree lines. Val's KCT doing a great job there of revealing those. And that will actually allow us to push forwards with our tanks soon in order to take those out because uh, as soon as an ATGM squad is actually revealed they are actually weaker against tanks uh, because they have a low number of men which means that a couple of shells from a tank will just kill the squad and you got to be careful about that anyway as you can see we do have two lances in base that Val has been using I've also brought up two of my own now uh, in order to help us uh, to help us push on the enemy so you can see I'm marking where I'm going to lance to try and take out some of these Verplug squads. And then we're going to push forwards with our tanks and make our final advance into Echo. So that was Val Strike. Here comes one of mine. And I believe I retargeted my second one so that it fired into this area just here. So we are definitely getting a lot of our Quartz Manoneer through this forest on the right side now. And you can see this APC actually running away. Uh, this was the CV that I was originally capturing Alpha before we got there, I believe. And it ran all the way off around the right side here to get back towards the enemy base. So 
Bubble Box trying to save that and make sure it doesn't die because it would give us a lot of free points. But Silver Raptors decided to bring an F-16A Block 1 just to provide some air superiority. The Vows, Gorse Balanir catching Silver Raptors unaware and taking those out very quickly as he stuns them. And the second squad goes down just as easily. Although the APC is doing a serious amount of damage to one of our squads. So now with my recon tank moving forwards, I reveal the enemy HGM squads. And you can see that they both get taken out very easily by the overwhelming number of 2A5s that I am using. Silver Raptors Block 1 comes in to try and take down our bombers, but he flies right over our AA and somehow manages to get out alive. My Hawk Pip actually ran out of ammunition there. I believe Vals was one missile away from doing so as well. So that would have been part of the reason. So my Leopard Tank is continuing in front of my Leopard 2A4s and the 2A5s. A Pratt there with the two, with the tow 2 system does get spotted and sniped very quickly. And as I was saying, HGMs just aren't that great because they can be destroyed so easily by heavy tanks once they've been spotted. And the only thing I need to be careful about is this AH-64TD because I don't have any close range AA just yet. Val's bringing up a cheetah. I have another one just here that I'm also starting to move forwards. Should have kept them with my tanks though, ideally, uh, from the start. Because that's a big mistake that a lot of people make, I feel is that they leave their AA behind by accident, especially when they're making like heavy armor pushes. At least it's something that I did quite a lot when I uh, started playing the game. And uh, it's something just to, to be aware of. Don't forget about the three push. I mean, make sure you have your AA with your tanks and your recon, because without one of those things, there's always gonna be an, a counter to your push. And now my H64 TD here, nearly getting a wonderful couple of kills. But the Cheetah got really lucky there as the second Hellfire missed. And then the Cheetah got the stun and shot down my TD, which, which really sucked. So now Silver Raptor's got his own tank in this forest. It does get a cheeky shot towards the Leopard 2A5 and also my cheetah. But now, as you can see, I am charging him. My 2A5 coming up, getting a nice kill on the left side there. I believe that was a cheetah. Another APC going down there. And this tank is gonna get completely overwhelmed shortly. Although I do have to be really careful about this AH-64 TD that's starting to attack my 2A4s. Fortunately, I get just behind the trees in time so that I break the line of sight of the Hellfire missile because Hellfire missiles are actually semi-active. But I managed to stun the H-64 there and shoot it down with the Cheetah before any more damage is done. Unfortunately, cluster munitions coming out of the enemy do manage to pick off one of my 2A4s that was on low health. The second one remains alive and now I managed to take out the pesky recon leopard that was in this forest also managed to pick off another aa unit there and the stoot trooper managed to take out my recon tank but as the stoot trooper get revealed you can see the cheetah there doing a ton of damage and i basically just charged them down with my 2a5 so our infantry is still moving around this right side just sweeping through the forest over there but Val's 2A5s have arrived as well now and there isn't really much they can do to stop us rolling through. We've got adequate AA with these two cheetahs and we've got three 2A5s continuing to push up with one of my 2A4s being very low on health. So Silver Raptor's starting to make a move 
on this left side and killing a lot of my uh, APCs and recon tanks but I bring in two 150 CUs with the Maverick air to ground missiles and managed to kill off one of his 2A5s in that pass. The second one being left on 1 HP. He did neglect the fact that he needed uh, anti-air to make that work and unfortunately that means that he left himself open to air attack. So my KCT here with the Carl Gustav M2 managed to pick up a 2A5 kill because it was left on one health. And now my CNV 25mm picks up a kill onto the Leopard Recon because that was also left on one health after the bombing strike. And the enemy had a, uh, aircraft is going to get shot down very quickly by the cheaters. And my 2A5s are continuing with the help of Vals. So that cheetah and leopard combo is actually pretty strong against infantry and tanks mainly because the 2A5 is just such a strong tank anyway and also that cheetah can rip apart infantry if they are very close so you can see I'm bringing out this cheetah wide in order to be able to attack that stood troopen. The cheetah does get a bit distracted by a enemy transport helicopter and that does allow this 2A5 to get hit at close range in the front. A tank manages to snipe my cheetah finally, but it's a little bit too late. And now Val's Corpse Malinier on this left side are pushing into the town to finish off Bubble Box and Silver Raptor in Echo. So the 2A1s from Bubble Box coming up to try and stop us from continuing but 2A1s are no match for 2A5s and as you can see we are popping them very easily. And now Val's captured this FOB, once he's killed those two troopers all that's going to happen is his corpse man and the air are going to go back to full health again and they're also going to get all their ammo back. So that's even worse for Bubble and Silver. Then we have a block one here coming over from Silver Raptor. It's flying directly over my Hawk Pips. And it looks like Val's critical hit from his HEOS does manage to get the kill. So we are on 4,500 points. Bubble Box and Silver on 1,815. And we find their command unit in Echo and destroy that. So there's probably one left on the map. If we go to the neutral perspective you can see that Silver is trying to bring it back towards Echo to capture that but we have brought up a command infantry squad to capture their reinforcement sector which means in a last ditch effort I bring in a massive air display of my 150CUs, my Block 5s and MOUs uh, just to have a little bit of fun <laughs> at the end there with all of my F-16s. A lovely, beautiful display to finish things off as we destroy the last CV, which goes towards our Colts Manoneer. So, um, there are a few things to take from this game. Uh, it was a very fun one. I mean, I think both sides had fun in that game. It was a bit of a stomp, but um, Bubble Box and Silver definitely put up a good fight towards the early mid-game. Uh, unfortunately, those two A5s where we decided to roll together on the right me and Val we managed to push through them pretty convincingly towards the end and uh, yeah that's basically what happened so yeah the main thing to take from this is recon <laughs> very important uh, on that left side I only had recon and it allowed me to identify when Silver went for that little push with his two 2A5s and the Leopard recon and because I had so much recon there I also knew he had no AA which meant I could bring in those 150 CUs and destroy those tanks very easily. So that was all down to recon. The other thing was uh, make sure you get value for money on all your units. So I had those two A5s from the start of the game. They went to that left side and they were kind of sitting there doing nothing for, for ages. And just one thing to think about is how long does it take you to actually just move that to the other side of the map uh, with your teammate and actually make them useful? 
I think that's something that a lot of people neglect. They love people love to stay like play safe and just keep your units in a tree line and wait for the enemy to attack. But sometimes you've got to take that initiative and move your troops that are not needed on one side of the map to the other so that you can make a better play. And that's what we did with the 285s in this scenario. I also did it with the course marinier a bit earlier on. So that allowed us to secure alpha. And then when we wanted to push into echo, I moved my 2A5s over with all my AA because I didn't need AA on that left side uh, because all I had was cheap recon units. And yeah, that was that. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this replay. I mean, I had hoped to put it up live because the commentary was quite funny, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. So I did it as a post -com. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the showcase of the Dutch units. I mean, this is going to be the last uh, Dutch v Dutch game that we played. So uh, you're unlikely to see another one for a little while, uh, but hopefully a lot more content soon. Of course, the war game tournament coming up as well. Make sure you check out all the information on that. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.